mistake that we have committed as science communicators in the past is that we have focused too much on scientific data, scientific information, scientific knowledge. It is scientific temper which should be the ultimate goal of communicating science. Create a mindset, create a worldview among common citizens that everything, every conclusion could be changed tomorrow. With new data coming in, with new knowledge coming in, there could be a very different, radically different worldview. And we should be able to accept this new worldview because the new data has come. The earth was flat, it became round. It was in the center of universe, now it's no more in the center of universe. We should be able to uh, uh, grab this information with open arms. That would, I would call as scientific temper. That should be the direction of science education. That should be the uh, direction of science communication. Scientific temper is very different from scientific attitude, scientific uh, public understanding of science, or even scientific literacy. The difference between the two is that these notions, scientific literacy, scientific attitude, scientific knowledge, they focus on the only the scientific domain. But science in public life goes beyond the domain of science. When you tell somebody that there is no good blood or bad blood, the blood is can be categorized into various classes and human beings are equal. Right? It cracks down a kind of mindset suddenly. So, science always, with its conclusions, goes beyond scientific data, beyond scientific tenets, beyond the use of science for developing technology. It creates a mindset. And this mindset, when created, is called scientific temper. I'll use a simple example that if there is a report that UFO was seen or Mary started weeping in a, in a church or there is a miracle in a temple somewhere. There could be two kinds of attitude one, one uh, uh, may look at the event from. One could be, yes, I am unable to explain, it's, it's a miracle. The other could be, no, there are no miracles. I am unable to explain right now but let me investigate or consult an expert and maybe i'll be able to explain tomorrow this is scientific temper see i've held always held this opinion since 80s when i started working on science communication and public understanding of science that every human being is scientifically literate and we should not categorize people citizens of the world into two categories. The moment you say that there is something like scientific literacy, you are, you are also saying that there is something like scientific illiteracy. So you are categorizing people into two categories, scientifically illiterate and scientifically illiterate. I don't think that human beings are scientifically illiterate. Science has two components. One is intuitive, experiential, and the other is counterintuitive, mathematical, mathematically obtuse, difficult to understand, with lots of complexity. So, a normal common human being is rational and scientific. At the same time, when counterintuitive things happen in the life, he may resort to what is known as irrational behavior. But that doesn't make him scientifically illiterate. We need to judge and focus on what is the level of scientific literacy among the people and how to lift it up.